This week's parasha, parasha has told us, we start off by talking about the Eilat told us Yitzchak ben Avram, the Torah is talking about the life of Yitzchak Avinu. But if you study the parashas, they're very surprising. We find a tremendous amount of space devoted to the story of Avram Avinu's life and the story of Yaakov Avinu's life and many, many stories. And Yitzchak Avinu's life is really, there's not that much space in the Torah devoted to it. There's not that many stories about him. The story of the Akkad is primarily an Avram Avinu story. There's the story in this parsha is the story, a story involving the digging of three wells and him going to the Eretz Plishtim. And it's really, it begs the question why Yitzchak's story is so much less than what we find by the other Avos, especially in light of the fact that he lived longer than the other two Avos. He was the only one to live to 180 years. Rav Yaakov Kamenetsky explores this topic. He also raises that we find in the Rambam, in Hilchus Avodah he talks about Avravinu's success in introducing the masses to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And he talks about how Avravinu built yeshivas with tens of thousands of tamidim. And then it... Uh, and then he says how Yitzchak taught Yaakov Avinu. It almost makes it sound like Yitzchak doesn't, didn't have yeshivas with these masses of Talmudim. So he begs the question, what was, why was the life of Yitzchak so different from the life of Amr Avinu? So Yaakov Kamenetsky, and Yamas Yaakov, he talks about this, he approaches it from the direction that we have to understand how they rose to their greatness and what their midah, therefore, of hashpa in the world was. We know Amr Avinu was the midah sachesed. But what it really came from was Avram Avinu's whole foundation that he built in his Avodas Hashem really came from his appreciation of a Baruch Hu's Chesed. And that was something he connected to, and therefore he devoted himself to Chesed because he was inspired by Hashem's Chesed. And he would have people over at his house, and he would do good for them, and they would want to thank him, and he would say, you know, what I did for you is only a, is nothing compared to what a Baruch Hu does for us. And he would introduce them to Hashem and appreciate Hashem's Chesed in the world and thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That was the Mahalich of Avram Avinu. And it's something which people can relate to. It's something which drew the masses, drew in all these Talmidim. Yaakov Avinu's Mida was the Mida of MS, which is not as easy as the Mida Sachas said, but he, he was inspired by Hashem's Mida Sachas, and he came forth with that Mida Sachas. It's something which people can connect to. The Mida of Yitzchak was the Mida of Din. This idea that Things are exactly according to the word of the law, and there's no room, there's no wiggle room. It was the Hashem's strict mida of judgment. So this was something which Yitzchak was able to tap into. He was able to tap into it at the Akedah and go besimcha. But it was something which the masses were not able to connect to. And therefore he wasn't Zaycha to have the thousands of Tamidim that Avinu had. I guess they probably all, it seems even that they left, according to Yaakov. But Instead, he had his Talmud Yaakov Avinu, and that was the one that connected him. So it's not because Ay Yitzchak was any different from the other Avos. He was just as great. We say, okay, Avram, okay, Yitzchak, okay, Yaakov, because each one of them had their own greatness and their own foundation, irrespective of who their father and who their son was. And that's why they get their own special LOK in the Bracha. And Yitzchak Avinu inculcated things within the Jewish people which last us for the generations. He says this meter that people have to be Moser Nefesh al Kiddush Hashem comes from what Yitzchak was willing to do at the Akeda. I thought I'd read otherwise that it came from Alvina being willing to jump in at Orkasta, but he's learning that it came from this mice of the Akeda. So Yitzchak Avinu is just as great and at the same time, his own Mida came forth in a way that, I guess, the, the passes didn't relate to it in the same way. I'm not sure how Rav Yaakov Kamenetsky would explain, based on that, why it's not so much his stories in the Torah. I guess something in this ball, but maybe it's something that's just harder for us to tap into, harder for us to connect with. His Mahalach Avodah is probably a more private Avodah. I think just on a practical level, we can learn from it that sometimes just because things are more visible and more appealing in the outside world doesn't necessarily mean of what the truth and what's going on in the inside world, that while there's much more detailing of the, of the life of Avon Vinu and much more Talmidim, it doesn't in any way diminish 
from the greatness of Yitzchak, he's no less great than Amr Avinu. There's another approach I found in the Sefer Sam Derecher of Simchas Sobroidi. He also explores this question of how come the Torah shortchanges so much the life of Yitzchak Avinu. He approaches it also from this side direction that Yitzchak is the Midas Hadin, and Yitzchak lived his whole life through the Midas Hadin with no, with, uh, without the Midas Arachmanis, the way that Hashem originally had intended to create the world. So Yitzchak Savinu's whole approach to life was to live according to the strict Midas Hadin and Tavash Yonish Baruch Hu, to deal with him with the strict Midas Hadin. It says at the end of his life that uh, he went, he started to woo, he lost his eyesight. It states in this, in this Chazal that he's quoting that the Pshah was because he asked the Kodesh Baruch Hu to have Yisurin so that he should, so that he should, so that, you know, just in case there's some Midas Hadin that he's not fulfilling, that he's not living up to the standard he needs to live up to and he'll be judged for the next world, that he wanted to be judged according to Midas Hadin and he wanted to have that Yisurin. And this is the meat of the Pachad Yitzchak of this living through the Midas Hadin. So some Chazal says, it's based on the con- the reason why it's not so much his stories in the Torah is because of the concept of Maisi Avos Simon Wabanim. That there's this concept that whatever the Avos experienced, it was putting something into the Bria, into the future destiny of the Jewish people. Like we find the Ramban explains these two stories in the Parsha. The story of the three wells is a remez to the three Bate Mikdash. That the uh, first two are stopped up, the third one is Rechovos. It has this boundlessness that the third base of Hashem will have, that his going down to the Eretz Plishtim is a remez to the Golas Bavel. But th- th- what happens to them and what's written in the Torah is putting something into the world and into the future destiny of the Jewish people. But Akarish Baruch Hu didn't want that the binion of Kayasal should be with the Midah of Yitzchak, because Yitzchak's Midah was the Midah Sadin, it was too tough for Kayasal to handle. And therefore, that's why they're not written in the Torah. They remain beseser, is he says, is so that to protect Kai Yisrael for the future, that they shouldn't be in the realm of Maisei Abba Simon Labanim. So in this sense, the, the reason the Torah is concealing them is more of the Rachmanus of HaKadosh Baruch Hu to protect us from this powerful living that the, that the foundation of Kai Yisrael should be up, shouldn't be our P the Midas Hadin, and I think this chat also serves, should just serve to remind us of this fundamental idea of Maitzi Abba Simon and Bonham, that the stories in the Tanakh are not just stories, that in fact they were building, explored once I'm going to share before, they were building the foundation of Kai Yisrael for all the generations. And just to appreciate the greatness of Yitzchak Avinu, that the fact that the Torah doesn't list his stories in no way diminishes from his greatness in any way. Wish you a wonderful Shabbos.